when the topic of mergers and acquisitions come up, you know, one of the probably the, the most common question is, you know, what is what is my business worth, right? What is my IT business worth? And the answer, uh, the straight answer is, it depends, right? And I think it's important to always keep the mindset of it's worth what someone else is willing to pay for it. Somebody else who's willing and wanting to buy your business, right, is going to have to get their money back, right, frankly. Um, but it's got to be a win-win situation for both sides. So, right, is it enough for you to be willing to sell? And is it reasonable enough for them to still be willing to buy? And when those two roads meet, you know, winner, winner, chicken dinner, so to speak. And it can range, right? It, it, it matters. It matters what both of those businesses really look like, what they have, what they offer, what they will look like when they come together and what are the synergies, what are the efficiencies to be gained, you know, where are costs gonna go away on the business that's being acquired, where is efficiency gonna be gained on the business that is doing the acquiring, all of these things go into a soup. And so, you know, this, this talk of 2x EBITDA, 15x EBITDA, you know, one times annual recurring, all, all of it is relative, but it's all over the board because each soup is going to be drastically different when you look at a merger or an acquisition for two specific companies. So, you know, the, the short answer or the, you know, napkin math might be, you know, yes, you can look at multiples of EBITDA. Yes, you can get, you know, sometimes, you know, one X or a little bit more on annual recurring revenue. And I think it's going to be heavily weighted and you're going to have a more valuable business if you do a few things, right? focus on monthly recurring revenue. Businesses that have, you know, more monthly recurring revenue than hardware sales or project sales are going to be more valuable at the end of the day, 100% of the time. Uh, I believe that businesses that are efficient and run well and, you know, don't have heavy or excessive uh, service teams and salaries and things like that are also going to be valuable, right? Um, and, and businesses that are frankly run efficiently and Businesses that are at a little bit of scale, right? It's going to be hard to put a high valuation on a business that maybe only has three or four or less than 10, you know, employees, right? Because it requires a lot of work from the owner uh, or ownership. And depending on what your goals are in, in selling your business, if you want a sunset, if you want to leave soon and, and, uh, and you're wearing a lot of the hats, that's going to be a challenge from a, a valuation perspective, as well as you know, a, a, a well-rounded clients, right? No whale clients, right? A single whale customer in an owner-led organization, and that owner wants to sunset and go away. That's a dangerous predicament, you know, when forty percent of the revenue or twenty percent of the revenue is tied up in one single customer. So, a well-rounded client portfolio. A, a, a you know vast majority of the business being in monthly recurring revenue, right? And a team that is happy and has stayed with that business and is going to take care of those customers. That's a business that would you know carry a better valuation in my mind um, versus again you know a whale customer, you know owners wearing all the hats, doing everything, and and there's a lot of billable or or block time and project base versus monthly recurring. You know there's going to be a smaller valuation there. Both sides are are going to have to come to an agreement that says this is rich enough, so to speak, for me as a seller for me to want to do this deal. And this is in the long run going to be reasonable and profitable enough for me as the buyer to want to do this deal. And so yes, there's probably this balancing act or this teeter-totter of meeting that number in the middle um, so that both sides are frankly happy, right? At the end of the day, a deal has to be a win-win for everybody involved. Not only 
the owners on both sides, but the teams and the clients and everything else. And so, you know, I, I'm not going into these looking for anybody and everybody. I am really looking for, for us, you know, mutual win-win because I'm, I'm in it for the long run, right? I want the team to stay with us and to be happy. I want the clients to stay with us and be happy and to be well taken care of, right? And I want it to be a win, you know, for the owner who is looking to sell and, you know, maybe they stay with us, maybe they sunset, whatever it is, right? I want them to be happy that their goals are met, right? Um, so I think it, it really has to be looked at you know, and, and we do the same thing when we're out there marketing and selling. We're not looking for every single customer we can pick up. We're looking for a win-win fit, um, even for the clients that we bring on. We talked about it in the last video, and I think it's super important to recognize that IT businesses are very resource intensive. They are expensive to run. The people are expensive. You know, we have we have lack of talent in the industry, right? It's very hard to push past the million dollar uh, ceiling. And then I think even harder, you know, to push past some of the other barriers uh, at higher levels, right? But quite often we see a lot that are, you know, around a million dollars and it becomes very resource intensive. Now, even more so given COVID, given lack of talent in the industry, given cybersecurity threats, right? So, Frankly, I think it's important for businesses at that size or that stature, especially as the owners are getting older, to really look at, you know, um, at being a part of uh, being acquired because I think it's going to make their life easier. It's going to make sure that their teams are, are, you know, better taken care of and have the resources that they need to have better balance um, and not as high stress and, and um you know, busy, busy, busy. Uh, and frankly, it's going to be better for their clients, right? There is, it is just very difficult to do everything well um, when you're kind of a, a smaller uh, IT business. And so I think it's important for those, you know, at that stature or at that level to look at, you know, how they might be able to be acquired, roll up and tuck in with another uh, for the betterment of everybody involved. In a, in a cool way, I've not really run into any IT business owners who are so selfish that they only care about themselves. They very often care more about their teams and their clients than they do themselves. And so, yes, you know, it, an owner who sells and gets acquired, yes, they will, you know, get a payday. But more importantly, their team and their clients will be taken care of. And that is actually what's more important to them, in my experience.